Someone recently asked me for a response to another person's criticism of the Catholic practice of, as they put it, praying to dead saints. This question first presupposes that the saints are in fact dead. Catholic belief is that the saints, having died, now reign and therefore live with Christ in the glory of eternal life in heaven, which he has won for us on the cross. They have entered into life in paradise. Jesus did not say to the good thief on Calvary, Some day you will be alive with me in paradise, but today you will be with me in paradise. How could he be in paradise if he were dead? Jesus also said to the Sadducees in the 20th chapter of Luke's Gospel, God is a God of the living and not of the dead, for to him all are alive. So the saints may well be dead to this world, but to God and in his presence, they are more alive than anyone on this earth right now. If we look at the gospel accounts of Jesus' transfiguration, we would have to ask, since Moses died about 1,300 years before that moment, and Elijah about 800 years prior, then how could they be there with Christ and talking to him? And was Christ breaking the Mosaic law, which in Deuteronomy 18 strongly forbids, under penalty of death, communication with the dead, when he was talking with these long-dead men? The Catechism has this to say about seeking the intercession of the saints, praying to the saints. It says, They, the saints, contemplate God, praise him, and constantly care for those whom they have left on earth. When they entered into the joy of their master, they were put in charge of many things. Their intercession is their most exalted service to God's plan. We can and should ask them to intercede for us and for the whole world. That's paragraph uh, 2683 in the Catechism. Given that the saints are alive with Christ in glory, they are also actively still engaged, as during their earthly lives, in promoting God's glory, his kingdom, and in the spreading of the gospel. They do this through their intercession on our behalf. When we speak of praying to saints, we do not, as Catholics, mean the same thing as when we speak of praying to God. Prayer to God always involves the worship that is his due. However, we do not ever worship the saints, and therefore prayer to them involves a request that they might pray for us and with us to God from whom all good things come. As any one of us might ask a fellow Christian to pray for some intention for us, so we can rely upon and ask these living saints to pray for us to the Lord. This is not something that is contrary to Scripture. In the second book of Maccabees, chapter 15, Judas Maccabee is given a vision of Onias, who had once been high priest, and the prophet Jeremiah, both long deceased, but both still interceding for God's people. In Jesus' parable of Lazarus and the rich man in chapter 16 of Luke's Gospel, Jesus implies that the deceased man is alive, though in a miserable condition, that he is aware of things happening on earth, and he is trying to pray for those of his family still alive, albeit he is not in heaven and not in union with God, and his prayer therefore does not produce the desired effect. In the book of Revelations, the Christian martyrs established now in heaven call out to God for justice upon the earth, in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelations. In the twelfth chapter of Hebrews, 
The scripture speaks of a great cloud of witnesses who are looking on at our struggles here below and urging us on. Now, if they are that interested in us, then it stands to reason that from their close proximity to God and because of their perfect love for all God's people, they would pray for us. And their prayer is powerful indeed. For St. James, in his letter, in chapter 5, makes it clear that the prayers of the righteous man are powerful in their effect. The closer the union with God, the more powerfully effective is the prayer offered. It stands to reason, then, that the saints can, by their prayer for us, draw from the Lord immense grace and power for the good of those still on earth. If we accept that the saints are alive in heaven with God, then is it conceivable that they would suddenly stop praying for others and for the accomplishment of the Lord's plan for the world? Would they not now be even more convinced of the necessity to do as the Lord requests of us in the gospel? If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will grant it. And if you ask me anything in my name, I shall do it for you. The Catholic practice of seeking the intercession of the saints is far from unbiblical, and it certainly does not take one ounce of glory away from Jesus. If that were the case, then any Christian who ever asked anyone else to pray for them could be accused of setting that person in a place above Christ in their faith. All you saints in heavenly glory, pray for us.